everybody welcome back to my channel this is abby with abby reviews and this is going to be my review for superman and lois season one episode five last we left off all men as a foolishness was happening and um we need to get into the see what's going on let's jump into the show shall we okay pause i was thinking so smallville is having their harvest fest and it's this big thing and Clark is super excited. He can't wait to share it with Lois and the kids and he's been talking about it for years and it's the community coming together and helping each other and everything. And um, Jonathan and Jordan are at school and they see Sam and Sam kind of asked Jordan on a date and he was like, great. And he, she was like, Jonathan was like, his girlfriend will be there. Um, finally able to visit. And so... Jordan got tongue-tied when baby girl asked him out. And so Jonathan, being the wonderful brother that he is, had answered for him and got made sure that everything was cool. And then he gets a call from his little trifling girlfriend and she dumps him over the phone. I don't like this. I don't like this that it seems that as Jordan is ascending to everything, Jonathan is I don't is like this. Because I feel like the universe is trying to pit the brothers against each other for some reason. And I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. We could give this to so, um, Superman is talking to Lois about cleaning out his mama's office to make room for Lois to have her own office. And she was like, you're going to get rid of your mother's things? And he's like, that's what she would want. And, you know, for you to be happy and we'll give it away at the Harvest Fest. And she was like, okay. And so she gets a call from Edna Moe Jr. And... She's like, are you coming into work today? What time are you coming in? She was like, why? And she was like, Sharon Powell is here. That's the lady that got choked out by Rage Man. And her son is with her too. And they have this cockamamie story to get bonked on the top of the head. And he don't remember making those phone calls. And he don't remember nothing about the job. And right, and they, now they're telling her, write a story about how her son was found and not about Morgan Edge. It's a setup, setup. Wait a damn minute. So, oh God. So, they, Lana is at the desk taking in donations. And this one lady comes in and she's like, household items. This is all, I'm sorry, Lana, this is all we have. And she was like, don't you dare apologize or feel bad after everything you've been through this year. Thank you so much. So, um, Sharon and Powell and her son Derek come up and they said they, and they had some men's clothes and she was like, Oh, thanks. Cause we always get a lot of women's clothes, but we don't get men's clothes at all. And they was like, no problem. She's like, can I have your name for recognition? And she was like, Sharon and Derek Powell. And she was like, from New Carthage? He was like, yeah. And then you see the little boy, he's like, you can hear a high pitch, um, whine. And he's like, he says he doesn't feel well. And so he says, I'm going to the car to get the clothes. And he gets on the phone and he calls some chick named Laura to, I need to see you. It's an emergency. And then the high pitch wine comes on. His fire vision lights the fuck up. the room on fire with his eyeballs. Holy shit. So they pushed him out there to get um, Lois to back off. And now it's backfiring because the boy can't control his fire vision, fire power, laser vision, heater up eyes. I don't know what we're calling it, but he done set the building on fire. Jesus. Okay, feet. Paul. Excuse me, man. So the building is clearly on fire. Um, Lana's husband is there doing his fireman job and they realize that one of the team is still in there. They go to get him. Um, Clark hears the distress. He goes and he super blow, cold blows the fire out before he kills, um, a lot of husband and the man. So he gets back home and him and Lois are talking about the fire and stuff. And it's like, I saw Sharon Powell there and she's like, well, that's suspicious that's weird and so the boys come home from school jordan tells his parents about eliza breaking up with jonathan lois goes to talk to jonathan jonathan is really not trying to hear it um lois goes down to the center where the fire was and talks to lana husband. so she asked him a couple questions about the fire and 
he's like the guy did actually get hurt and they don't they're not sure if he's gonna make it and he was the best man at his wedding so he's torn up about it and so Lana calls Edna Mo Jr. and they both like it's mad suspicious that Sharon and Derek was at this at the center before it burnt down and so as Lana is getting back into her car I mean Lois is getting back into her car Lex Luther shows up and is like hey I've been wanting to talk to you and uh oh because he's figured out he says wherever Lois is, Superman is sure to follow. So he trying to get his hands on Superman. We just gonna see how that work out for him. Pause. So oh, Lex Luthor is disguising himself as some engineer reporter person to get on Lois's good side so they can figure out Morgan Edge when he really just trying to get close to her to get to Superman. Lois wasn't born last night, so she's very suspicious. Um, Edna Mo Jr.'s is talking to the mama, Sharon, Derek's mama. And Derek told, said his mama text said he needs some space. And then Edna Mo looks at her phone to get Derek's location so they can figure out what's going on with him. Lil Jonathan has finally blown up and said, I don't want this shit. My life has turned to shit since I got here. I don't want to be here anymore. I have a friend who lives in Metropolis. Maybe I should just go back and go back to my life, which was great before I left, before we got the fuck here. And him and his brother stormed off to the... My husband gets home. Lana is trying to get stuff together for the rest of the Harvest Fest. She talks to her husband about the man and the lung damage may be permanent. He might not be able to come back. And she goes to give him a hug. And clearly he smells like booze. And she, he was like, just give me a minute. I'm going to take a shower. We can go to the harvest fest. She's like, no, I got people waiting on me. And then uh, Sam interrupts her. She was like, go ahead, just take Sophie. And I'll wait back here with Dad, I guess. And um, child, I hope she doesn't stand up, John. And, I mean, Jordan fooling around with her daddy. Because uh-huh. a lot of shit just happened. And the first thing that I want to say is that Superman is fine when he's in that uniform and his hair is flipped up. Child baby. He's cute with the glasses and things. But no, he's a whole snack. He's a whole snack. Okay, so the boys get to the Harvest Fest and... Um, this is after Jonathan has flipped out and screamed at his daddy and talked about he want to go move to Metropolis. So they get to the Harvest Fest and two of the little douchebag friends are there from the football team and they are drinking. And so Jonathan decides that he wants to drink and Jordan is like, this is not a good idea. And he's like, I'm going to go meet Sarah. You just be cool. And he's like, yeah, we'll be cool. So I'll give you all of them before we get to the other shit that went down. So they're having a conversation um, they're eating the chocolate covered bacon. So, just as they're about to, you know, get deeper and, and have maybe like some real philosophical, maybe kiss conversations. Um, Jonathan drunk ass shows up and they bust up the party. Sarah is already on edge because her daddy's a drunk and he passed out on the sofa. She left him at the house. So now that these boys are drunk, she's like, listen, I can't. You a bunch of idiots. You act like you don't. You, none of your shit has consequences and you being jackasses. And she walks off. And so Jonathan is trying to smooth it over, of course, because Jonathan is being Jonathan. And he can't fix this. And so Jordan is like, it's okay. It's cool. He's like, I'm so... And he apologizes profusely. You know how drugs do. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And so uh, he goes to get he, he gets some water to sober him up. And they're walking around. And they run into their parents. Just as Clark was telling Lois that Jonathan said he wants to move and back so, to... Clark is like, oh my God, he's drunk. And she's like, you been drinking? She's like, your father can smell it. I can smell it. The whole town can smell it. Take your asses home. <laughs> Get an Uber and go home. And they were like, okay, mom. And so Edna Mode has followed the location from uh, Derek's mama's phone to where Derek meets Leslie Lar, the assistant to Morgan Edge. And they put him in like this MRI machine, but it's like heats up with fire. I guess that's supposed to fix whatever is wrong with him. And so Edna 
calls Lois to tell her that she sleuthed her way and she saw the machine and telling her what happened. Of course, Clark hears it and he flies over there as Superman to wreak some havoc. Now, um, Lana is pissed. Her husband been drinking and he all drunk up on the couch. Chair. Dramatizations ensues. So, Clark gets there with Lars, Lisa, and Derek. And so, Derek takes off flying and Superman follows him and they fight and stuff. And Lex Luthor sees where they are and he starts to follow them with his jacked up Winnebago. And so, he... I don't know. What is this man's deal? Like, what is your issue, sir? What is your issue? Like, are you that blinded by what happened on your world that you can't for any second think that this is a different, a totally different person? Like, I don't like I don't get his vitriol. I really don't. So he takes his stupid ass with a rocket launcher and he fires at uh, Superman and the man and it hits them and they fall to the ground. So he comes out with his gun. But before he could get there, Superman is talking to Derek. So Derek says, what did they do to you? And he's like, he re- they resurrected me. And he was like, I can help you. He's like, no, you can't. I'm already dead. And then he like spontaneously combusts. It's like the fire power from his eyeballs takes over his whole body and burns him up. And so I guess Superman leaves. And then stupid ass Lex Luthor with a handgun. What the fuck are you going to do with a handgun? That's my question. Stupid ass. Like, he gonna shoot somebody and take somebody hot. If you don't sit your dumb ass down somewhere. So, uh, they worked it out with Jonathan. They had a conversation. They'll revisit it, uh, I guess, in a couple weeks if he still feels the same way about moving back to Metropolis. So, at the Harvest Fest, there's like Morgan Edge replaced all the things that were lost in the fire. He was just trying to be generous. Blah, 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 blah. So they do this big, we have one last uh, thing we want to show you, Clark. And then Lana made the speech about his mother and how she always sat on that bench and she would talk to any and everybody. She was the best of Smallville. So they had that, a plaque put on the bench with Martha Kent, the best of Smallville, in the spirit of his mother as a little um, memorial, which was very sweet and very nice. That was the bench she was sitting on when he got on the train and left to go to Metropolis. And I guess she said on it was waiting for him to come back. I guess I don't know. That's it's very sad. So I Clark was are sitting on the bench and they're talking about the boys, and you know he talked about how he was selfish and his mother let him go anyway. And she's like, "That's what you do when you love your kids and you know that they need more." And it's like this boy seemed like they're growing up so fast and he's like they were just babies yesterday he was like yeah uh you say that to someone who wasn't in 27 hours of labor with these babies and he was like you're right and so they're uh hugging and stuff on sitting on the bench just enjoying each other and being in love and all that good stuff and lex luther get mad he runs to his jacked up winnebago and siri is like your blood pressure is up this must be about Lois and he was like she was like do you do know this is not your Lois and he was like everything about her is the same except she married somebody else Ooh. so the Lois in his time was his wife Ooh. oh no I wonder how that he gonna be mad when he found out she so Sarah and Jordan are having a conversation. She apologizes for ruining the date. She friend zones him. He's like, I guess we'll be friends. And they giggle at ha ha ha. So he's walking home and Tag ambushes him and say, what did you do to me? And he starts beating him. And he's like, how did you do what did you say? What do you, wait, wait. And he's like, he's beating him and beating him. And that's how the episode ended. Oh my God. On a cliffhanger. I can't wait for next week's episode. It's going to be good. Oh my God. Tag was beating the bricks off of that baby. Okay, that episode was a lot. Um, it was a whole lot. Lex Luthor is not mad. Is he here for Lois? Is he here to kill Superman? I'm confused now because that he was she was his wife in another life. Oh my god. I wonder how Lois is going to take that news. I wonder how Clark is going to take that news. And does he know that Clark is Superman? Like, I have so many questions. Also, I need something good to happen for my baby Jonathan. I Listen, 
He gives and gives and gives and just seems to be kicked in the face in return. And I don't like it. Let me know if you've watched the episode. Like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a kid. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.